Greetifications, folks. John Morgan here. Welcome. There are two sides to every single story. The passion and the glory. Just trying to make it through the day. You know we're trying to come together. Arm and arm and hand in hand. And with my brother, I will fight to unify our land. America, home of the brave. We stand strong when we're willing to change. And I will wash the feet of freedom And bow down on my knees Praying for a healing Fighting for the freedom Of my brother and me And on the other hand There are those who would undo us A truly who would rule us And break us all apart And I will stand beside you Fight against injustice And lawless ones among us Come on, let freedom ring America, America Home of America, the brave America, We stand strong When we're willing to change And I will wash the feet of freedom And bow down on my knees To pray for a healing for the freedom of oh, my brother and me. We pluribus soon them. Get your guitars and tune them. Melody and harmony. Let's make a little revelry Keep her up a suit Get your guitars and tune them Melody and harmony Let's make a little revelry Keep her up a suit Get your guitars and tune them Melody and harmony Let's make a little revelry Robertson from Duck Dynasty and Duck Commander. I want to tell you about a great book called War on Fear from my good buddy, John Morgan. Of course, he looks like George W. Bush who had the famous War on Terror, so I immediately knew, you know, there was a nice uh, a bit of wordplay there. This book is fantastic. I think it speaks to sort of that natural fear that all of us have, whether it's public speaking or whether it's the first time you get asked to do something you've never done before, uh, up to, you know, the fear of, of loss of life, of, of a sick uh, person in your family, all the things that, that we face every single day. I recommend this highly. I promise you will be blessed when you read this book. And it's the sort of book that after you read it, you're going to want to pass it on to someone else, which to me are the best kind of books. So War on Fear, get yours as soon as you can. I'm the free world leader. 
Beautifications, folks. Freedom's rolling out to you. Oh, let's roll. Well, I'm the good news instigator. Compassionate conversator. This freedom is rocking and rolling on. And welcome to a Monday edition of the John Morgan Show. I am honored to see on the wall my friend Ken Walls. Ken, it's good to see you there. I caught a good bit of your interview this morning with Ken Starr. <laughs> awesome. Love you, bro. Good to see you. Good to see you, Diane. Good to see you, Dee. Good to see you, Karen. Good to see you, Beth. Good to see all you guys and gals out there. What a joy it is to be together. Ooh. Oh, yeah. All right. Uh oh. Where's my backdrop? Oh no, I'm I'm falling down on the job and, and Ken Walls is watching my Facebook Live mentor. Oh well, sorry about that. <clears throat> you know, everything that we do has rewards and consequences. Every single decision that we make. And how do we make those decisions? We make them by weighing the options. Sometimes we do it uh consciously, specifically, and sometimes we do it unconsciously or by, uh, by rote. You know, when you're in your car and you're getting ready to turn left, you just turn. You probably don't remember it when, when you get home. I was at Walmart earlier today buying some dog food because they ran out of our favorite dog food at Costco. I barely remember driving home. I made all kinds of decisions unconsciously. Now, had I been a little bit more conscious, I might not have gotten honked at in the parking lot by the car I almost backed into after I barely missed the lady that was walking behind my car. True story. Sorry about that. I need to be much more conscious when I'm driving. But I got home. There are some defaults that we can train ourselves to think of unconsciously that will help us to make the very best decision in each and every opportunity that we have to make a decision, which we make probably 10,000 decisions each and every day. I mean, it's crazy. Like, a decision means reaching over and grabbing my Trump 2020 cup and taking a sip of water out of that cup, as opposed to grabbing my Trail Life USA coffee mug and taking a sip of coffee. Mmm, delicious. Both. We make decisions all day long. And how do we make those decisions good ones? And how can we train ourselves to always make the best decisions? I have a song that answers that question. Hang on. goes like this. It all comes down to love. What we're singing of. 
Life flows from above It all comes down to love It all comes down to love What we're singing of Life flows from above Whoa It all comes down to love You know, um, that's a song that I put on my first album And unfortunately, that's all there is to the song <laughs> So I, record, I repeated it about three or four times as still a short song, and I had varying background vocals and stuff like that. The reason that's all there is to the song, I could make up this really grand thing and say, because that statement is so important, it needs nothing else. But the real reason is, verses never came to me. <laughs> so rather than leave the song in the, in the box of unfinished songs, I decided to just go, go ahead and record the chorus and leave the verses to come later. But I'm making a commitment to you as of this moment. I'm making a decision to make a commitment to my friends on The John Morgan Show. I am going to write verses to the song, It All Comes Down to Love. Because the song needs a life. It needs a, to breathe. It needs to exist apart from just an outstanding chorus. But I wanted to play that for you for the reason that we ask the question, what is it that helps us decide how to make decisions? You know, there's a friend of mine, he's a former POTUS president of the United States who, who, who made uh, so many important life-altering decisions and that he monikered himself the decider. The decider. I am the decider. I am the one who decides. Not Dick Cheney. No, it's me. Dick Cheney is the vice president, okay? I am POTUS. He's the V POTUS. <laughs> so decide or don't decide. Both are decisions. That's right. What? To not decide is a decision? Oh, Friends, how many times have you wrestled with whether to do this or that so long that the opportunity just passed you by? And maybe that's what you were hoping would happen, and of course it did. And then you could blame the window closing on your inaction, but your inaction was, was due to your own indecision. Yeah, but what if, what if I make the, what if this... Eh, 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 Folks, if you've got the right criteria for decision-making, then making decisions is so much easier. And it all comes down to love. It all comes down to loving God and loving your fellow man. Have you ever heard the acronym JOY? Jesus, others, yourself. If you put things in that order, your decision-making gets so much easier. It gets kind of automatic. When I was a younger man, billboards with tantalizing images would lead me into very bad sin, <laughs> very bad decisions that would affect my life in a very negative way because I didn't have the preset decision-making process trained in my body, in my system, in my psyche. But once I learned that, I began to learn it from, from, from reading good sound books from, from people who live that way, and I watched the examples of what happened to their life when they made those decisions. And I, I guess I got a little wiser, and in so doing, I stopped doing a lot of stuff that seemed good in the moment for me, for my flesh, for my gratification, but were not based in love. 
And when it all comes down to love, a well, decision making is a no brainer. <laughs> and so I just want to encourage each and every one of us, and myself too, because uh, I don't make all the right decisions to this day. Far from it. I'm working on being better. I'm working on making better decisions. I, I want to put my, my bride ahead of myself. I want to be a better husband. I want to be a better dad. I want to take more time to reach out to, ask questions about, listen to, care for my four boys and my six grandchildren, whom I love so dearly. There's so much more growth ahead. But now you know the format. Amen? Well, that's, the, yes, Ken Wall's Amateur Hour. <laughs> I, do, I do that a lot, pick up the guitar and just play a song. I want to encourage you to, guys to tune in to the Mike Huckabee program this weekend where yours truly will be the, the uh, guest uh, debuting some comedy, converse, conversing with the governor, and uh, debuting my new music video, My Brother and Me. The song is at the head of the John Morgan Show, but the music video is finished, it's in the can, and it'll be released this weekend, probably actually be online before this weekend, and as soon as it is, I'll let you guys know so you can get a sneak peek before anybody else. You'll be the first ones in America to see the new music video, My Brother and Me. It's a great, great uh, statement about unity. E pluribus unum. Get your guitars and tune them. Harmony and melody. Let's make a little revelry. <laughs> yes, America is a beautiful melting pot of people from all over the world. America is a place committed to equality. Have we been perfect? <laughs> Come on. But are we working hard at it? You better believe it. The refrain of the Peter, Paul, and Mary song, There is Love. I got to check that out. I, I don't, it's not coming to my recollector, but uh, I'll check it out, Karen. Awesome. Yes. So, Lord, we just pray for everybody within the sound of my voice. Dear God, I pray that you would heal my brother Dale Lee up in Chicago having back surgery today. Dear God, would you give him an, an, a, a ridiculously awesome miracle? Thank you, Father, for Dale, my friend, the Bill Clinton impersonator, the brother I always wanted, and he always says, and you're the brother I never wanted. <laughs> no, he, I, I'm like, I, I got that wrong. I say, you're the brother I never had, and he says, you're the brother I never wanted. <laughs> anyway. Dale and me, two peas in a pod. Lord, I pray that you'll heal. We pray, we together collectively pray that you'll heal my sister Janice. That, and we thank you for healing Joe. We th Joel, thank you for um, all the good work you're doing in uh, my friend, uh, I forgot his name. Thank you also <laughs> for my uh, classmate struggling with ALS. Thank you for healing there, Father, for Karen and for Diane. Thank you for healing for Andy and Chris and Eddie. Dear God, we just give you glory for all that you're doing in our beautiful, precious world. In Jesus' name. God bless you all. Don't forget to hit that like button. Don't forget to share the program. Please, I ask you, share, share, share. Let's, let's uh, get this good news out there to other people so they can enjoy it and benefit from it because it all comes down to L-O-V-E, folks. God bless you. Ken, thanks for joining in today. I appreciate you, man. Give me a buzz. Let's catch up. Jan Yandal, hello, my friend. It's good to see you. Wait, wait, wait. What now? D. Deloy. Well, there you go. I love it. <laughs> as soon as I'm out of debt, bro, that's <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> oh, my goodness. 
All right. You know the song. He is now to be among us at the calling of your heart. Oh, yeah. He is now to be. Am- oh, yeah. Troubadour. Is that? Of course. Yes. You were right. I did know the song. Bueno. Bueno, friends. All right. Well, God bless you. Keep, keep, uh, keep me in prayer for the Huckabee Show. And uh, if you're interested, I, I uh, am uh, loving sending out copies of War on Fear, helping people get fear out of their life so they can be better deciders. We have a whole chapter on that, the fear of missing out. We, we deal with the fear of abandonment, fear of rejection, fear of uh, success, failure, uh, fear of terroristical type people. It's a, it's, a, it's a wonderful read. War on Fear, and you can also pick it up at audible.com in case you'd like it to be read by the author, which, of course, would be me. And uh, kudos for to, to Joel Balin, my buddy, who co-wrote, or with-wrote, as they say, the book, and... Uh, He's a good man, too. And also, a quick shout-out and prayer for our troops, for our first responders, especially our police and sheriff's department, uh, going through an awful, um, an awful time with people who want to act like they are, uh, they are the bad guys and the bad guys are the good guys. I just I don't buy that. I support the blue. And, of course, the... the uh, the, the, the beautiful thing about the way this country is set up is that we support right living and we support love. Amen. All right. Have a great day, everybody. God bless you. And God bless the United States of America. And God bless you too, John Yandel. Appreciate you, brother. I'm Gina Lipsky, and I just want to give a testimonial. Um, John Morgan's book, uh, War on Fear, changed my life significantly. Last year, I was at Free the Dream, and he gave a, a talk. And um, I had been held, I was robbed at gunpoint 15 years ago, and I carried that fear with me for, uh, for 15 years. And at Free the Dream, after hearing him speak, um, I realized that it was time to let that fear go and um, a small thing that is small to some people but to me it was significant I never took the trash out at night because I was so afraid of being in the dark um, and when I got home from free the dream and after reading John's book I now take out the trash every single week at night on purpose so that I can conquer that fear and so I encourage all of you to read his book and any fear that you're hanging on to, let it go. It's not worth it. Don't give it the power. Don't give it the power. Well, I'm the free world leader. Freedom's rolling out to you. Oh, let's roll. Well, I'm the good news instigator. Compassionate conversator. Freedom is rocking and rolling on after you. Well, thanks for tuning in today, to, folks, to the John Morgan Show. It has been my honor and my privilege to chit with you and chat with you about being a decider, about living life all in for the good of others. You know, I found that joy comes from fearless living. When you live fearlessly for the good of others, your love cup, your joy cup, gets filled up. It's so true. It's not about you. But when you make it about someone else, good comes back to you. That's just the way it works, folks. That's the way God set up this beautiful world that we live in. Oh, yeah. Thanks, folks. Thanks for being here. And we will see you in the morning on Pray for America. 14 minutes or so of prayer for our nation, for our leaders, for our lost, for our loved ones. Mm -hmm. 
got the decider blues There once was a decider That lived inside her <laughs> Bye y'all